Okay, let's begin. So, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. My name is Julia. I am the Customer Marketing Manager here at Monday.com. Uh, and we're here joined today with Diana Kosert, who is one of our champion uh, Monday.com users. She's going to be telling you all about how her and her team work agile with Monday.com today. So just before we hand over to Diana and you're uh, in for some inspiration, uh, let's just go through some of the boring stuff, the housekeeping for this webinar. So firstly, uh, I know that many of you are probably going to have lots of answers, uh, questions, sorry, for Diana to answer or for um, the two CXMs who've joined me on this webinar and who will be answering your questions live throughout Diana's presentation in the Q&A box. So the, the point is, please write your questions in the questions and answers section of the Zoom. You'll see that at the bottom of your window and not in the chat. We will not be looking at the chat for questions. So please just put them in the Q&A and the CXMs will answer most, most of the ones they can get to during the presentation and will be selecting some of them to go to Diana at the end of the webinar, which she'll answer live. Secondly, uh, we will be sending everyone on this webinar, even if you, did, even if you didn't attend, so you're, you're not here anyway, but you registered, you'll be getting a recording of this webinar within 48 uh, hours. So just check your emails for that if you have to drop off or if you want to uh, recap and go over it again. Uh, and that's it from me. So uh, without further ado, I think we're ready to hand over to Diana, who is going to present her team's workflow for working agile with Monday.com. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Julia. Uh, welcome to this webinar where I'll be showing you uh, how to work agile with Monday.com. Uh, so here's a little bit about what we're going to go over today. We'll start with uh, an introduction of myself and the company that I work for. And then next, I'll take you through the main concepts of working agile and the processes which agile teams use. Then I'll show you the main boards and dashboards that we use here at Mortgage Center uh, for working agile with our sprints. And then we'll end with some conclusions, including, including some personal tips on how Monday has impacted our company. So a little bit about me. I am project manager and scrum master here at Mortgage Center. I'm currently a part of the IT department. So our customers are internal and external users of the softwares that we support. We're not a traditional Scrum team at all and do not just do any type of hardcore development. Our team is diverse and includes reporting specialists, business analysts, and even desktop support agents. I usually, I actually used to develop software for a small company in Ann Arbor. Uh, we developed VB.net in, in SQL and uh, someday I'll have to give the Monday API a chance and uh, write some GraphQL code. Fun little fact about me, uh, I started running in 2017 and have run eight half marathons. Woohoo! Uh, I had planned on running my first full in May, but sadly it was canceled. But expect me to see me at a full very soon. All right, so a little bit about the place that I work, um, Mortgage Center. We are a mortgage company based out of Southfield, Michigan, uh, and we're not just a typical mortgage company. We partner with credit unions that give an opportunity to lend to their members. And this year is actually really important for us. We're celebrating 30 years. Uh, this year has also been a record breaking for us and we're halfway through the year and we've already closed on more loans in 2020 than all of 2019. All right, so you may ask, what is agile? Some of you may know and may actually practice agile, but I'll give a brief explanation for those who don't. Um, Agile is a type of project management process. This involves incremental development that we call sprints. And in each, each sprint um, is a set of time, anywhere between two to four weeks. Each of those so-called sprints include small working features that are built out in that time. These small working features are made up of one large product or project. The process flow is this. The sprints begin with our sprint planning meeting, which is used for planning the goals for the sprint. A backlog really helps us decide what is most important to complete next, and the sprint begins and the team starts working on their tasks. Uh, we also have a very important meeting every morning, which is called daily stand-up. Uh, the goal of this meeting is to make sure that the teams are on target to completing the goals set for the sprint. After the work has been completed for the sprint, uh, progress is shown to our stakeholders using something called a sprint review. 
The small working futures are included in this presentation to show the progress towards a larger goal. And after the sprint review, we do a something called sprint retrospective. This is where the team evaluates what went well in the sprint and what we need to take a look at for next time. It's really important in Agile to identify what is holding up our goals. So you don't have to be a traditional software development team to practice Agile. Any team can do it. It really turns those complicated projects into smaller incremental releases to deliver results. The ability to see the progress made on projects is easily done when practicing Agile, and it really allows you to make changes as you go based on feedback from stakeholders, clients, et cetera, and in our case, executives. It means you don't work in a product, you don't work on a product until it's 100% perfect, but in really those smaller incremental releases, and you improve those processes and those releases as you go. I've even been told that most of the teams at Monday.com, from design to customer experience and marketing, work in an agile way. It's pretty cool to hear. All right, so before Monday.com, uh, before our adventure started, we had a physical scrum board. Uh, so I'm really excited to show these pictures to you. Um, our process was extremely manual. Um, here, from the left to the right, the first picture is what our weekly sprints used to look like. The second and third pictures are examples of what our backlogs look like, and we would actually physically have to move items around the board after we completed different statuses. Um, this is kind of inefficient and also inefficient for team members who wanted to work from home because in the end, I was in the office and I had to change the statuses for them. All right, so <clears throat> our, uh, we have around 80 users at um, Mortgage Center actively using Monday.com. Different departments use Monday for different purposes. Our solutions department uses Monday to track delinquent loans. Our quality assurance department uses Monday to track audits. And our company activities meeting even uses it to plan company activities outside of work. So it's a great place for us to get all of our thoughts basically on in the software. My team specific, specifically manages our entire workload out of Monday. We use it to track what is in our backlog, what we're working on in each sprint, and we, what we want to get better at. We also track our to-do list for certain reoccurring processes. And then finally, we use Monday.com for our reporting and our uh, dashboards. Um, so let's get started. All right, let's go to the, uh, the first backlog that I'd like to show you, which is the IT sprint backlog. Um, this is a hub of information about projects and tasks that need to be completed. And before Monday, like I had shown you, uh, we had everything physically on a card on a board. Uh, it took up that entire room. Really wasn't too productive and not to mention whenever we wanted to talk about a task or a project, we had to wait for that certain individual to get up to speed about that certain project. Um, now Monday really gives us the ability to store all of that information in one place and makes communication even better. So items make it onto this board in several different ways. Uh, a request can come through the support desk. Those requests are usually small and can take a short amount of time. Another way items make it on this board is from project boards. Uh, so like I said, we're, we're, we use it company-wide. We also use it for our different projects that we manage. Um, the, the project boards are managed cross-departmental and have items due each week, many for our team. And during our sprint planning meeting, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, we'll review the project boards and whenever something is added to this backlog board, whichever method, uh, we have an automation set up which will um, notify me. And for those of you unfamiliar with Monday automations, uh, these features really allow to remove man manual processes and uh, kind of put them on autopilot instead. So let me go ahead and give you uh, an example of that automation. So if we go into the automation center up here on the right, you can see that <clears throat> when a new item is created, it notifies myself. So if we click on this automation, um, as you can see, new item is created, notify. What's really cool about this notify function is you can basically put whatever message you want uh, to say to yourself. So basically, uh, this has the item name placeholder that you can click down below. So this message says item name was added to the board under the item group by blank username. 
kind of a cool automation. Um, like I said before, we had that manual board and uh, you wouldn't know whenever something went up. You just kind of see someone go into that room and see them putting something up on that board, but there really wouldn't be anything like this um, in that type of process. Um, so as you can see, we have this backlog kind of organized into several different groups. We have each group represents a backlog for the work that we need to do uh, in diff different softwares that we support, like Mortgage Flex, MultiView, Blend. Um, this really makes it easy to track uh, for uh, what we're doing on each type of software. All right, and now let's get into the different columns that we have on the board. So uh, we have status, story, um, status, <laughs> story point, resource, request date, due date, and last updated. Um, so if we got dive into the status column, we have two different statuses available to select on this board, to do and stuck. Uh, since you're not really completing any work on this board, done and working on really aren't uh, necessary. If something is done, it, it should have made it to a uh, IT work in progress board. But basically, um, the two statuses uh, represent the two statuses of this board. Uh, the stuck status is probably the most important status uh, that we have available because it basically says that there's miss missing information um, in order to start working on this task. Um, so in order to speed up that process, I have another automation set up. Um, it will send me a notification if an item has become stuck. So I'll basically show you that now. I'll show you that now. If we go to stuck, it should pop up here on the left hand side. Just give it a moment. Here we go. Uh, so this notification says we need more information on mortgage flex review and fully document the WFMIP refund process. Pretty cool, right? I mean, uh, I now instead of the individual coming up with coming up to me or sending me a message saying that they're stuck on this item, I get that notification. I can automatically go to that item and see what the status is. All right, another column that we have on this board is called story points. Uh, before we add anything to the board, we try to really collect as much information as possible so that we, we can estimate the number of story points needed to complete the task. For those, of the, for those of you who don't know, story points are a way to are a way that many development teams measure their time. Other teams can do this too, don't get me wrong. It's just uh, the purpose of making and managing um, work, easy, work easier. So our goals align with uh, the story points each uh, person is to complete each week. Uh, we have a 1200 story point goal set at the beginning of the year. This calculates to about 25 story points per developer. And the suggestion is pretty much to stay around 25 as to not become overwhelmed. But often enough, each person can go over. I'll get, a lot, I'll get into that a little bit more when I uh, show the uh, IT work in progress board. Uh, but that's something kind of cool that we have going on there. All right, next is the resource column. Uh, as I said before, we're very specialized and have very specific roles here at Mortgage Center. Uh, so we have eight different automations set up. So when an item gets added and the person adding that item will assign it to themselves, then the automations are triggered. And when I say automations, I have eight of them. Uh, <laughs> the automations um, basically are triggered based on who it's assigned to and the item automatically moves to that corresponding group that the resource is specialized in. This is really to keep the board organized, keep it moving, um, and just ensure that work is uh, able to yeah. All right, cool. Let's go into that automation right now. So if we go back to the automation center. Um, we can see the eight different automations that I have here. Uh, we'll go ahead and click on this one. So this one says when resource column is assigned to Gina, so you can assign it whatever you want, it moves it to the backlog Salesforce group. So Gina is a part of our Salesforce team. And um, if she were to add an item and assign it to herself, uh, there's no need to really move it to that group. It'll just automatically go there. All right, let's go back to the board. So I have more automations to show you. <laughs> All right, the due date column. Um, sorry, out of order here. 
let's go back to the request date, sorry, <laughs> uh, request date, which is uh, the date that the request came in. We have an automation set up to automatically set this requested date uh, when an item is added to the board. Uh, this date keeps us on top of the most recent request and really allows us to look back and have an accurate record when something was requested. So if you go back to the automation center and we go back to this, uh, when an item was created, set request date to zero plus days. So if we step through this automation a little bit, basically it's just when an item is created, so anything added to the board, uh, we wanna automatically set the requested date, so no longer needing to manually add that date, to the creation date plus zero days. Um, you can select the time interval, so you can do uh, weeks, months, days. Uh, in this case, we want to keep it that same date. This really allows us to understand um, when the request came in, uh, see how old requests are, kind of keeps on top of on top of the work and also allows us to clean out old work. So if there's request dates from a long time ago, um, you know, you kind of question why that item is still in the backlog and why is it even an item? All right, next is the due date column. Sorry, I wanted to go in order. And uh, go figure, we have another automation for this. Uh, when the due date is one week out, the item jumps to the next sprint group up here. Uh, so basically this makes sure that if we have a item that was added a long time ago and the due date is approaching and you kind of forget about it, make sure that this item pops up in that next group um, and it allows you to have like a safety net almost. Go into automation center one last time and we go to the due date column one week before the due date arrives, we move it to the next sprint group. So you can sign, again, assign whatever time interval that you'd like. You can do any date column, but in this case, we have the due date column and it just moves it to the next sprint group. All right. And just to kind of wrap up what this board really does for us, dumps all the requests into one spot, any future tasks which need to be completed, any requests from the support box. That way you don't have to keep it in your head. It's basically all on this board. Uh, backlog really becomes a good resource when planning out that next sprint. All right, next we're on to the work in progress board. And these are live boards for us, so um, uh, things might change while we're, while we're here. <laughs> Uh, this board is actually where we execute the tasks. We create a new board for every sprint by duplicating a template board. We have it in this e account. Um, I'll show you how to duplicate a board a little bit later. But as I said in the beginning, we're not a typical Scrum team. We're made out of very, very different roles and the tasks that form the items on this board can vary from sending up new employees to developing new reports, et cetera. And another non-traditional way that we work is in one week sprints. It's actually more common and agile to work in like a two to four week sprint, but each team can work however you want. Each Monday morning, we uh, get together and have that sprint planning meeting that I was going over in the beginning where the IT team gets together to figure out what we're going to work on next. So I eat this week. Uh, and we make sure that all the requests are being fulfilled from the backlog along with any project boards. And usually a lot of this information has already been planned. So in this meeting, we kind of aim to finalize everything and make sure everything is on task in the sprint board. We move items from the backlog board to the sprint board and we duplicate the items in the project board and move them to the, the sprint board. All right, as you can see, this, uh, this board is kind of broken up into several different groups. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse two of these groups, which is the training and uh, the development groups, just so you can uh, kind of view the columns a little bit better. Uh, so development maintenance and training, uh, we have different groups because we have different goals that correspond to these different groups every quarter. Uh, when organizing your own sprint, you can split it up in any different way. Uh, you could have one board for all of your sprints and use the groups to kind of define like different weeks. So instead of development, you could have, you know, 727 sprint. Um, for us, it just makes it easier uh, to have one board per sprint and split the boards based on that type of work. So during our um, Monday sprint planning meetings, we also talk through any problems that we're having. And this meeting takes a lot of time, it, uh, but it's really important 
because if we plan correctly, think about it, uh, we'll just need to make small adjustments as the week goes on. And after this meeting is when uh, the team adds sub items for each of these items. So sub items are great. Uh, they're really impactful. <laughs> they came at the correct time. Um, and it's so hard to describe an item in just one line. You, al you have to almost break it up into several different groups. Um, for one example of this is our weekly network maintenance. So we have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday sub item uh, because you don't really want to say that, you know, at, at your weekly sprint meeting, you're still working on it, kind of sounds bad, and then you have nothing to report on until Friday. So um, side up, sub items are great to uh, go through the week and break down those bigger tasks into smaller ones. Um, we'll go into the uh, columns a little bit here. Uh, the item itself has a ta has the title, so it, just a brief explanation of what the item is. And then, like I said, we have the sub items that break down each of the um, tasks. And the sub item columns are really simple. Uh, you can see that we have the title, the owner, and the status. Uh, beauty of the sub items is it doesn't necessarily have to mirror all the information on your main board. It can just be its own little kind of mini board itself. All right, and then on the going through the board, we have two different status columns. We have the sub item status and the status. Sub item status is something new. I don't know if you haven't seen it before. Um, as you can see, if you hover over, you can see what your sub item uh, pretty much roll up looks like. So this one for, uh, we have a setup that we're doing for a new employee. This has two of two of doing and pretty cool because you can see without clicking into the item what it looks like. But I can show you how to set that up really quickly here. If you go back into the sub item, you can click this down arrow. And if you click this um, show summary on parent, um, I'm not going to click it again because it'll just duplicate the column, but it'll pop up here in the sub item status. Pretty cool. Um, and this allows the teams to really understand what's happening at any point in the week. Overall status column we have here is to use for reportings that we uh, do on dashboards, which I will show you later. Then we have the story point column. This is a really important column, like I mentioned in the backlog, because as a part of management of our team's tasks for a sprint, we estimate how long an item will take. So you can see we have two different story point columns, the story point and the actual story point. So you can kind of think of it as like an estimated, an actual, um, if something took longer than expected, uh, members of our team will go ahead and put the, you know, uh, here's an example of this is, this only took eight hours of time. So Kaylee went ahead and put eight here in the story points and then it was actually eight. Uh, the reason why we have two different story point columns is to make sure that we have a good understanding of how long the item will take in the future. So for example, if uh, the audit for the blind delete issue actually took 13 hours, um, Kaylee would go ahead and mark that up to a 13. It's just to make sure that we have accurate reporting going on. There's also though a neat feature that Monday does have that we don't use. It's called time tracking. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of show you guys here. Um, here's how you add a column. If you didn't know for uh, those users on Monday who aren't really uh, using it too much, you can go to more columns. And then I'm gonna go ahead and search for time tracking. I'm not gonna add it to the board, but um, this is uh, easy time tracking spent on items. There's like a play pause button that basically you can track in real time how long that item takes. All right, we'll go back to the board. And next, we have the due date column. Um, I skipped over resource, but we talked about resource in the backlog column. Um, due date column, like I've said, everything is due by the end of the week. You'll see that we have deadline mode switch on, which is a pretty cool mode. Uh, you can see that there's different, looks like um, kind of like emojis set up here. So this one says done on time. This one says two days left. What's cool about deadline mode is it'll actually show how many days and what the status of that item is on completing on time. 
So um, for the items that have been completed on time, you can see this green little done on time uh, and a little cross in the date um, for items that are still waiting to be completed. You can see that there's two days left. And then for items that are actually overdue, it'll be red and it'll say how many days. Uh, you can go ahead and set that really easily by clicking this down arrow and it'll say set deadline mode. I don't want to remove it, but um, it's, it's pretty easy. It also asks you to connect it to a status on what an item, item means to be done. And in this case, when an item is changed to reported, that's when that item is officially done and reported. And the last column that we have on this board that I want to talk about is the project board. Um, the, the project column is really important because this uh, rolls up to our reporting at the end of the week to show our executive team. Um, they can come here and see at a glance what we're working on in the week, how we're making progress on those projects like I've mentioned. Uh, so under our maintenance group, you can see a lot of it is maintenance. As I talked about, we have the new employee set up. You can see that here, um, and I'll show that chart a little bit later on. Okay, so going back to the sprint planning meeting, like I was just talking about, uh, once we're done, once we've completed this board, uh, each person can pretty much complete their week. Um, they all know what the expectations are, are in the week. They all know the due dates, the time frames, and we make adjustments as needed, but the board pretty much stays the same the entire week. And as we go through the week, we meet for a really important meeting. It's called Stand Up. Um, another common practice, practice when working agile, it gives the team an understanding of who is working on what each day and what the status of the previous day's tasks are. Um, during this meeting, we uh, use filters uh, to kind of filter out this board a little bit. Uh, you can save these filters um, and they show up in this view column. But if we go over here, under the filters, you'll see that, wow, there's a ton that we can actually filter on. Um, so if I just pick two, I want to pick that a status has been reported on, and you can see the board kind of changing in the background, and it's assigned to Kaylee. So if we go back to here, we can see that there's um, a couple of things that she's reported on already for this week, good job. Um, and you can actually save it, save as new view, and it will bring you over here to the views tab and you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. We'll name it webinar. And you can access it later. Kind of cool. Uh, we have the different views, like I said, saved here. Um, and pretty much it, how you, how you access filters in the board. During this meeting, like I said, we also, um, we also get out of, sorry, get out of that filter so we go back to the board. Uh, we also utilize a status column. Um, so before the meeting, like I said, members will change the status to done. And then during the meeting, what we do is we change the status to reported on. So it's actually been reported to the team on what tasks that they've completed. All right. And now we'll go back to the, back to the views. Uh, so a board can be viewed in several different ways. Um, so in case you're not familiar, board views, this is how you access them. Uh, you should totally check them out. They're, they're really cool. Um, here's a few that we can look at. We can actually look at the Kanban view board. So this is more of a traditional uh, agile looking board. It has the different statuses and you can actually pick up items and move them as you complete. I'm not gonna actually do that because <laughs> that would mess up our workflow. Like I said, this board is live. Um, and it's kind of cool. A lot of our, uh, some of our members like to view it this way. Um, it goes back to the beginning uh, where we had that physical board. This is uh, really what that board kind of um, looks like. All right, and then we can go ahead and go into another view that I'd like to touch on just briefly. Um, I'll touch on it later when we go to dashboards as well, but this is a really cool view called workload. Um, I think you, you probably remember me talking about um, each member being assigned 25 story points every week. Um, so we put this, like I said, as a kind of stop and make sure that you're not getting overloaded for the week. Um, and sometimes you have to go over, like Orlando and Nick have gone over for this week, but that's just because, you know, things just have to get done sometimes. Uh, we make, and sometimes you have to push in order to take that vacation day. Um, but 
over here on the right hand column, you can uh, set these uh, different kind of maximums. Um, you can see that we're doing by, based on resource, uh, the column that defines the effort is the story point, and then the maximum is 25. Uh, so the check marks represent the uh, people who have gotten right on target on that 25. Um, the lower, you know, the lower circle and the upper circle kind of represent how much they're missing. Um, and then the red definitely represents that they've gone over. But I'll go over that. I'll go over how we use it in dashboards a little bit later on. All righty. I think that's pretty much it for the uh, status, for the um, views. It's pretty cool um, that you can view the board in many different ways. Like I said, you can go ahead and add views um, to any board. And it's nice to see that work kind of uh, flowing through those different views. So this is our IT work in progress board. Uh, like I said, it's a live board. Um, and it's kind of cool to see this be completed throughout the week and see all that work actually get done. Next, we're gonna go into the sprint retrospective items. So this board is pretty simple. Um, at the end of the week, like I said, we have a sprint retrospective with the whole team. Uh, another part, important part of Agile, it really helps us improve on our work. And during this meeting, we discuss what went well and what we need to take a look at for next time. Uh, what, we track on the, um, what we track on this uh, board, I'll go ahead and collapse this group and I'll collapse this group as well. Oh. <laughs> It doesn't show the columns anymore, Never mind. Um, so here's the title. We don't have any sub items. Uh, we have the date of the meeting and whether or not we took action. Um, so this is our what went well group. We don't need to take action on any of those items. We just need to continue doing them. Um, we just wanna have a pretty simple board that tracks what happened at the meeting, what we talked about, and whether or not we took action on it. Um, and it really helps us look at what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, what issues we were running into. And then every once in a while, I like to pop back in here and make sure that we're still taking action on those items that we wanted to take a look at. All right, and another process in our uh, workflow here is we actually have, uh, we keep to-do lists in our Monday boards. So this is just an example uh, of a to-do list it's called network maintenance. Um, and we organize our to-do lists in workspaces. I don't know if you guys use workspaces, but for such a large company that we have and how many users we have at Monday, uh, we definitely needed workspaces. Um, you can see here, we have a ton, like I mentioned, activities community. Um, we have the QA department, really awesome to use workspaces. I highly suggest them. We'll go back to the to-do list. Uh, so this is our network maintenance to-do list. Uh, I gave you that example on our IT work in progress board. Um, I touched on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, sub items. So this is the board definitely more in depth. Um, we talk about this board, we use this board uh, in order to understand uh, what we are doing in the future um, and what we need to do each week. You can duplicate boards really easily. Um, by go ahead and uh, going into the three dots in the upper right hand corner, um, go more actions and duplicate board. Uh, pretty easy, just name the month, date, year. It's a great, uh, great time saver and not reinventing, reinventing the wheel every day. All right, so next we're gonna go into our sprint reporting. So like I said, we have the several different charts on the boards. Uh, this is something that we show at what we call sprint review every, every week to our executive team. And uh, once we have completed the sprint, uh, we report on it. Uh, we show what projects we've been working on um, and all that good stuff. You can go ahead and set up the chart if you go into edit mode and then you go into the settings. Uh, you can see here that, we want to see the chart right now. Um, you can set up several different charts, line graph, bar graph. Here we just have a simple pie. Set up the labels. We wanna pull from the text column in the project. Uh, we want the values to be story points. And then we want um, the board to pull from is the IT work in progress board. So you can go ahead and actually pull from different boards in the past, um, but there's nothing really um, there's nothing that we don't need to see from the past in this. Uh, 
And that's pretty much it for the chart. It's pretty cool. You can use this to kind of report on uh, several different boards and see a quick look at the data in that board. We'll go back to the, the IT dashboard. Here is our last dashboard that I like to talk about. So um, this is our IT dashboard. Uh, we use this dashboard to have a good visual report of what we're doing each sprint. And uh, I visit this dashboard pretty much daily to get a good visual on how much, how much work is left. So just to give you a quick tour, we have the battery. We have the llama farm, which I think is hilarious, especially the hula hoops. <laughs> we have the workload widget. And then we have um, you know, these sums here, which I'll get into. So just to uh, get into how you set up these different widgets, um, I, went, I go ahead and went into edit view. We'll go into the settings of the battery. You wanna choose the board that you wanna pull from, um, choose the status, uh, choose what status column to include. Um, uh, you can have several different status columns. So you just wanna make sure that you're getting that correct one. And then uh, you wanna make sure that you're pulling from the correct group. So if I wanted to only see training, I could just select the training and see how close, how far they are to completing uh, all of their training items for the week. Okay, go back here um, and you can actually click on what the, what the status is and you can see a pull up of what is still left to do. Kind of cool feature. Let's just go back. Okay, cool. Uh, llama farm is kind of set up the same way. Uh, we wanna make sure, and if you hover over the llamas, they give you like a, a quick uh, title of what the, the item was. All right, next we'll go into the Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I think my, my mic just went up for a quick second. Okay, workload widget. That's the next widget that I like to touch on. We use the workload widget to allocate the work uh, to the team as I mentioned earlier. And this is a super helpful widget because it effectively allows us to plan the resources we have and ensure that each of our developers stick to 25 story points every week. Uh, this allows me to see how far, how close they are to that goal and how, um, and whether or not they've gone over and how consistently they've gone over that 25. So if we go ahead and go into edit again and we click the settings, as you can see, I'm pulling from several different sprint boards. Pretty cool to see that. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of red. <laughs> John Crandon is consistently over, but good for him. He can take vacation. <laughs> Except for this week, he's at 25. Um, so over here on the left-hand side, like I said, you can pick many boards to compare the work to. Um, you do the, the, the time columns, so you can actually click from different time columns. You can choose the, uh, the resource type. So in this case, we want uh, the IT member that's selected on that item. And then here is where uh, you actually set the capacity. So we want to see the story points and we want to compare it against the 25 capacity. Pretty cool board. Uh, I really like it. Uh, it. Gives a good visual of what we're doing in terms of story points and how many we're going over. I guarantee you that Orlando was on vacation this week. So that's why he's at a four. <laughs> Alrighty. And the last widget that I wanna show you is the uh, training. Um, these sums, and not just the training sum, but training, maintenance, development, and story point. We can go ahead and edit this real quick. Um, go into the board that you'd like to select, which columns you want to include, and then uh, what groups you want to uh, choose from. We want to only see the training group. Uh, pretty cool just to see that our training sum for this week is eight. Uh, you can select as many groups as you want. So if we wanted to see development, we could just select development. It's 104. Pretty cool. All right, um, so that's it for all the board information that I wanted to show you guys. We're gonna go back to the slideshow. Alrighty, um, so Monday.com has really had a great impact on how we work here at Mortgage Center. Monday has saved us two hours pretty much every week at our daily sprint planning meetings. Like I said, uh, it's still a long meeting, but the more time we spend at that meeting, the better um, our work will be in the future. Uh, we complete, we actually complete 100% of our workload 80% of the time. We turn that stand-up room that I showed you guys earlier into another functional meeting space. 
Um, we allow more time to spend actually on working items instead of figuring out acceptance criteria. Um, we allow quick communication about specific items. So you can tag people in updates. Uh, you can uh, make sure, you know, set up automations. It really helps that communication piece. Like I said, it's instant when we went from to do to stuck. Uh, we create better communication outside of meetings. Um, we have the ability now to work completely remote. And overall, we've increased the happiness of the team. All right, and some top reasons of working agile with Monday.com. So before we go to Q&A, I just wanted to share with you a few benefits um, of working agile. Uh, it keeps teams, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. It keeps teams with uh, the ability to change processes and workflow easily to improve effectiveness. Everything about our workload is completely visible and allows parties outside of our team to view and track the movement of our items. And then lastly, Monday.com really allows you to break down those larger tasks into smaller items and make easier to plan and work in an agile environment. All right, so um, I believe I'm gonna pass it on over to Julia and I we have some questions possibly. Yeah, I uh, hope you can all hear me. Uh, if you can't, please write in the chat. Um, cool. So amazing presentation. Thank you so much, Diana. It was really inspiring to see how you guys are working so successfully with Monday in an agile way. And I hope that um, that's inspired lots of you who are here uh, to start working more agile. So um, what we've done is we've collected some of the questions that people have been asking in the Q&A throughout the presentation. Uh, that are more related to your uh, workflow and the way that you do things over at Mortgage Center, Diana. So uh, don't don't jump off just yet. You're you're not okay. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go through some of those and and obviously if you if you don't know the answer, just just be honest with us. But I, I think most of them are sort of more related to the way that you guys work. So um, the first one we have is from Dan Wright. Um, he's asking what factors led to the use of Monday over tools such as Jira? Um, I actually uh, started at Mortgage Center well, uh, once we picked Monday.com, but it really allowed us to use it company-wide. Um, I am not too familiar with what Jira can offer, um, but Monday allows us to use it in every way, shape, form, um, especially with all of the cool features that Monday's been adding. Um, and we're not a traditional um, software or development team in any way, shape, or form. So um, I'm not really, I'm not really sure, too sure how to answer that question because I wasn't really here in the decision-making process on how to choose Monday.com. But I really like it. I haven't actually used Jira before, so um, I guess that's all the answer that I could give. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think Jira is a more um, traditional tool for for software development teams. So I guess this whole, um, the, the fact that Monday can be used by the entire company and Jira is a lot more technical. Uh, so that allows for greater collaboration across teams. Um, so second question coming from Biral uh, is how do you size your story points? Just to mention, there was a lot of questions in the chat about story points and whether okay. a story point is an hour or, or is it not? And how right. do you, so we've got, how do you size your story points and what method are you using to do that? So we're actually using the, uh, the Fibonacci method. Um, so a story points start at one, then they go to two, three, five, eight, 13, 21. And they're based on hours. So one story point would equal one hour. Um, our method in thinking that is just uh, simple thinking, not thinking too hard. Um, <laughs> and especially since we're not doing um, you know, hardcore, de hardcore development, we're, we're not really developing those really large, large, large features. Uh, we like to keep it simple. That's how we think about in our in our story point matter. Awesome. Um, so Sophia Butterazzi uh, asked, is the backlog essentially an in-tray of work requests? We also had quite a lot of questions about the backlog. So uh, right. <laughs> yeah, so our backlog pretty much it, it is it can be at some points like we could get a lot of action in our I also I manage the uh, the support requests that come in um, into our support box and I make sure that all of those support box make it to um, Monday. 
but sometimes they're smaller projects, sometimes they're larger projects. Um, but if they're anything over like a 21, we really need to have more, more of a conversation uh, with our executive team on if uh, this is, you know, you know, worth our time um, and make sure that we're really following the uh, objectives of what needs to get done at our company. So um, yeah, the backlog can be definitely an, an influx of, of work. And, and I know that monday.com has a couple of integrations um, set up fr from support desks. Uh, so you can get all of your, you know, your information into a backlog really easily. For sure, that's uh, probably the Zendesk uh, integration that you're okay. referring to. So yeah, if, yeah, if you're using Zendesk, you, you can uh, link like tickets that are coming in into boards. Uh, using the integration. So if you're using Zendesk on Monday and you're not using that integration, so maybe go check it out. Um, next question is from Molly. Uh, she's asking, how do the items actually make it onto the sprint board from the backlog board? Oh, okay. So we use the, uh, the, move, the function of moving from board to board. Um, Donna, if you, um, if you want, you can go back yeah. to the boards and show people live if it's, if it's something relevant like that. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so we'll do an example, oh, wrong board. Uh, we'll do an example here. Uh, so if I wanted to move MAC address filtering, move to, uh, you can move to a board and we just choose the IT, I won't move it, <laughs> but you can choose the IT work in progress board and then you can choose what group it goes to. Um, so in my example, this would go to uh, a development item um, but in other examples, you know, I mentioned how you can uh, format the board to have groups per week. So let's say if you wanted to move from your backlog into your sprint board, uh, you could just move it into that particular sprint that you're working in. Amazing. Um, so we've got actually a question uh, that's been asked a couple of times, which is, are the backlog items connected to the sprint? And I think that's just sort of answered it because you, you don't keep things in the backlog. It's actually something I remember when we, when we started to discuss your workflow, uh, I, um, I recall asking you if things re remain in the backlog and you link them to the sprint, which is another way of doing things. And, and we do have that capability with Monday. Um, so if you wanted to keep like a kind of record of everything in the backlog, uh, and so you didn't want to actually physically move it into the sprint board like Diana just, just demonstrated. So you could keep it in the backlog board and use a link and a mirror column to uh, create the item in uh, the sprint board and have them linked. Uh, right. But that's, uh, that's just a different way of doing things. Um, but that should answer, I think, uh, the question from Ida. Um, so Andrew Smith is asking, where do you keep the detail that explains the work for each backlog item? Oh, uh, so before each backlog item, um, we actually keep it, there'll be a comment. <clears throat> so for here is a good example on the NMLS license review. We have a comment that has the, um, the description of what needs to get done. Uh, also on this one, uh, there's a couple of comments about the case that it references that needs to get done. That's where we keep all the information. And if there's any type of conversation, so I had mentioned um, in the presentation that we have, you know, you tag me in an update, um, we're having a conversation on that and we usually come to a resolution in the in the comments. Um, and that's where we keep like all of our help of information um, really easily, really quick and easy to get to. And like I said, uh, you can get people up to speed very fast. Amazing. Okay, so we've got uh, another question about uh, story points. <laughs> um, so do story points directly translate into a set amount of estimated working hours? Are they edited on the go by the person working on the task? That's from Benjamin. So um, they're added before we start the item. So we want... Um, we want to make sure that we have all the information and we want to make sure that we accurately estimate how long it's going to take. Um, as, as we go along though, the actual story points can change. So that's kind of a moving target. Let's say someone uh, estimates at an hour of work 
and they've already spent two hours, but they're not quite done, they'll probably put two in that actual story point column. And then once they've completed it, they'll reevaluate again, um, maybe put a three or, or a five, uh, depending on how much time they actually did spend on it. But the, um, the actual story point, the, the estimated story points is uh, a number that stays, and then the actual story points is uh, possibly a moving target. Great. Um, Zoe Snow has asked, how long do your Monday meetings normally take? You mentioned they take a long time. <laughs> That's a sprint planning meeting. <laughs> so we have um, our Monday morning meeting, and usually we have three hours blocked out for it. Um, but with the uh, ability of having Monday being a digital, everything's on there, um, cards are already written, because before what we would have to do is write it on a, a physical card and then write all of our little tiny sticky notes, which are now sub items. So um, it usually only takes about an hour now, um, but we have up to three hours and it also depends on the types of conversations that we're having in the meeting. Um, it could take longer and it has taken longer in the past, just depending on what we're tasked to with that week. Um, if we have a lot of things that need to get done, if there's a merger going on, all that stuff. Great. Um, okay, so someone is asking, uh, do you keep all the boards visible to everyone? I actually saw that the sprint boards are private boards. Um, right. So yeah, just maybe like the reasoning behind that and like the logic behind what's open and what's not. Only it's some of them are visible to other people. Um, some of them are are hidden. Um, I. I we like to keep them hidden, maybe to possibly prevent people from going in and possibly accidentally changing something that shouldn't be changed. Um, but you do have that last updated and you can go and check to see who last updated the item. Um, but our thinking on that is basically we you know, don't really uh, need, we don't really want anyone going in there and, and messing up anything, but we do have those dashboards available for individuals to look at. Um, and yeah, that's but a lot of our boards are open to everyone. Uh, like I said, we're cross-departmental boards. We have those project boards and those are open pretty much for everyone to look at. Amazing. Um, so I think we've got time for just a few more questions. So um, we actually had a request from Samantha Anulo to see on the sprint board, the timeline view. So I think you didn't show it, but I think it is quite relevant. It's really super relevant for people working agile. Oh, so right here, this timeline view. Yeah, exactly. right. Okay. Yeah. So here's the, we, we don't necessarily use it. Sorry, I'm scrolling too fast. Um, but if you were to add, should I, should I show this on the dashboard instead? Cause I can add multiple weeks. Um, sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead and go back to our dashboard. We can hit edit here, go to add widget. We can go to add timeline. Uh, and we'll choose a couple of boards. So like I said, we have, um, we have a couple of boards that we can choose from and we rename our boards to done after we're finished with them just to kind of keep them organized. Um, so I'll go ahead and select two boards here. So now we have three selected and we always want to be seeing um, the timeline columns. We want to group by the resource. So you can group by anything um, and choose groups that we'd like to see. Yep. Okay, cool. So if you scroll down here, uh, here's the timeline view of what we worked on throughout the different weeks. Um, so if you were doing more of like a two week traditional sprint, you could essentially um, see what your two weeks look like and what, you know, let's say this item took up half of one week and then you needed half of another week and the rest of that other week that, to plan. Um, that's just an example of how you could use it. In our sense, we're not, since we only plan out one week sprints, we're not too concerned about the timeline view, um, but it is a cool feature. Um, definitely allows you to understand what someone's workload looks like. And if there's two overlapping items that are due within the same week, you know, what you'd have to do about that. But I hope that, I, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> cool. Um, we've got so many more questions coming in now. Um, so how do you decide that 25 story points is your target? That's from Rosemary Cantrell. Right. Okay. So we have that goal set at the beginning of the year of the 1200 story points. 
And so 25, um, you know, depending on how many vacations you take, really, uh, really uh, is a good pace to get you to that 1200. Um, and that's, that's pretty much how we, how we decided on it. We set a goal and then we try to shoot for that goal every week. Awesome. Okay. Um, do your stand-up meetings take place in the office or virtually? Oh, they take place virtually. Cool. Yes. I think it, a it lot is, of people these days are virtual, so. Yeah, we're completely, Monday really allowed us to, to do that. Um, we had our first virtual meeting uh, a couple of months ago, and it, it went very well with Monday. I just share my screen, and it goes smooth. Smooth. Amazing. Um, cool. Okay. Well, I think uh, I'm like, there are lots of other questions that people are asked at the last minutes. Um, but we are approaching the end of the webinar. So I uh, just want to thank everyone who's here with us still. And just to say again, that you will receive a recording of the webinar within 48 hours. Um, and some of you have asked for the q and I'm going to look into that for you and see if it's possible to send you the uh, questions and also those that were, were answered. Um, and in the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed and learned something new. And thank you so much again to Diana. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Have a great day, everyone.